What is going on guys? Pat from the shop and tonight we're looking at this AFR head to this Amazon DNA performance head, DNA motoring, whatever you want to call it. So to give you a little background um, why I have these AFR heads, I wanted to give them a shot because I'm building um, a motor for a guy, nothing crazy, just a nice little 355. Um, and he wanted some aluminum heads, mostly just for the looks. The thing's not a huge performance. It's going to end up making more power than the guy originally wanted, but you know that's not always a bad thing. So um, I ended up get going with a set of these AFR enforcer heads because two things: the heads I wanted were back ordered, and the other thing was I was kind of curious on them as I've never tried these AFR heads before. I've run AFR heads and typically they're out of the budget for most guys I'm building motors for but they make an excellent product so I thought this uh, budget friendly head they call it uh, might be something to worth checking out. So I have a set here. So these come in as a 195cc uh, as cast, no CNC porting, anything like that. 64cc um, chamber and this one is an angled plug uh, only because the straight plugs weren't available at the time. Uh, angled plugs are great, but oftentimes you may run into header clearance, so I'll have to watch for that uh, when I put headers on this. Uh, this is going into a truck, so we shouldn't have too many issues with headers. But um, So I ordered the, the set of heads. Uh, things are a little different. They run uh, 8 mil valve stems, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, it comes with um, ARP... Uh, studs and plates, AFR plates, um, adjustable guide plates. So it's a fully assembled head, other than you just got to put the guide plates in and stuff like that, normal stuff. Um, but it comes like this it's got the dual spring for hydraulic roller. Nice set of heads. So uh, I got them in and they looked oddly familiar when I opened the box. Uh, I kind of su suspected it as I was looking online, but as you can see, this head behind it, uh, this is not an AFR head back here. This is that DNA performance head I've talked about in another video and I actually have the flow numbers for both these heads so we can compare it. So that's going to be the video tonight. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of both these heads and then we'll go in and we'll take a look at the flow numbers. So one thing you'll notice uh, the deck surface wise, uh, both both have really actually decent machining. Uh, I've checked the decks, they're both super flat on, uh, on both these. Uh, the only real difference you'll notice, the bottom here is the AFRs are drilled with steam holes which is good for the guys running these on uh, like the 400 small blocks. You want to have those and if you're running these DNA performance heads, DNA motoring heads, you, you'll want to drill those and use your gasket as a template. Um, so if you watch my video before, I actually CC'd these heads. Uh, these are advertised as 68 cc's and I got 64, 65. Well, AFR actually advertises these at 64. So these ones are, are bang on uh, what they say. I haven't in, uh, CC'd the intake runner, so that might be something uh, I have to check because I did find these are advertised at 200 cc's and they were actually slightly bigger. So that might be the case with these. I haven't checked that yet. Uh, if you guys have checked that, just let me know. Uh, and then when I do check it, I will post the results in the description. Uh, both fairly good castings on these, but I do notice the AFR is a better casting. There's quite a bit more slag. Uh, you can probably see that if I get the lighting right. Uh, slag in the cylinders on the Amazon DNA heads um, and the, the versus inside the AFR heads, it's a lot more smooth. Um, again, though, machining is very similar. This one has more of a lip here. This one, it looks like they machined it off. You can kind of see the, mach the machine, like the milling marks. Uh, the intake gasket ports, or the, sorry, the intake ports, these have more of a, um, kind of like a vortex shape to them where they're skinnier at the top versus the AFRs have more of a uh, rectangular uh, 1205 gasket. So that's a bonus for as far as fitting an intake. This might line up kind of funny, these DNA heads. Um, I haven't tried them yet, so I'll have to take a look at that when I go to put them on. One thing I forgot to mention is the AFR heads are actually drilled for Vortec manifolds as well. So you can run the standard um, 
small block Chevy as well as the Vortec manifold. So that's kind of a bonus if you already have one or the other. Uh, you can you don't have to trade it up if you're going to the FR heads. Even though the ports, you might have to check port alignment uh, when you go to a Vortec intake because sometimes it's a little funky. Same sort of thing with the casting on the in, uh, the exhaust ports. Um, the exhaust ports on the DNA heads are definitely more rough. This is really noticeable on the exhaust. Uh, big slag marks. You can actually see here, even on the front casting here, how smooth that is versus the roughness. I don't know if I can get a good lighting. Oh, there you go. The roughness on the, on the casting there. But overall, not bad. I've actually seen some other uh, North American heads uh, with worse castings than this. This one actually looks half decent. But between the two here, uh, the AFR head is definitely better. It's almost like this DNA head is like a knockoff. Like this, these ones don't really make the cut for AFR. Uh, only the good ones get sent to them. That's kind of what it looks like, honestly. Like it looks like they're made in the same place, but this is kind of like the A line and this is the B line. One big thing I have to uh, point out uh, when when you're going with the AFR head versus the Chinese head is you don't get some nice AFR stickers with the Chinese head. So that's a big bonus. Just remember, just keep that in mind. So the difference here um, between the two heads as far as ports, not a huge difference. Uh, we're going to we're going to take a look at the flow numbers. I know you guys love the flow numbers. Uh as far as advantages, the AFRs do have the 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 skinnier stems, so that should help a little bit as far as uh airflow through the past the valve stem. Uh casting wise they're very similar other than there's a little more roughness to the um uh, Chinese, uh, well, I guess they're both Chinese. I say the DNA heads. There's a little more rough, roughness in the ports, so that might add a little bit. I'm just flowing them as I get them out of the box, so you know that it's going to make make uh, somewhat of a difference. I think uh, we'll have to take a look at the numbers. So you might have noticed uh, in the video I didn't talk about um, you know the valve seats and everything like that as far as like reliability with the DNA heads because I just don't know. I'm getting um, a lot of mixed reviews from guys since I've posted about the DNA head. Some guys uh, have great luck with them. Some guys have you know leaky seats or this and that. Um, I bought the head the head bare uh, because I've heard about bad issues with valve springs. Uh, so I'm just going to set them up. So I'm not going to go into details about the quality and stuff like that. That's why I was just kind of talking about the casting. Uh, the seats look pretty good, in, you know, as far as um, just a visual check. I haven't uh, leak checked them or anything like that. I did lap a few valves in. Uh, and the valve job isn't actually too bad. Uh, I am putting a good set of stainless steel 20216 uh, American made valves in them and as well as a really good valve springs. But I'm not going to go into details because uh, you know I'm going to trust the AFR heads over the DNA heads no matter what. AFR always puts out an excellent product or a good company. So I'm just doing a straight up comparison as far as you know what I can see and, and just flow numbers out of my own curiosity so let's take a look at the flow numbers here so as you can see um, right out of the gate on the intake um, the the DNA actually takes off at the lower lift so uh, the the breaking point being about 350 thou not a huge difference um, seven you know nine CFM and then between there uh, the three and a half thou or 350 thou mark and over the AFR head takes off quite a bit uh, peaking out at 261 versus 245 on uh, the um, the DNA head uh, this is the the bigger difference actually I noticed was in the exhaust so even though there was more slag um, skinnier valve stems uh, the exhaust on the DNA head actually uh, did quite a bit better than uh, the AFR head. And just remember guys this is on the same flow bench, uh, same the calibrated flow bench, super flow bench like this isn't uh, different this isn't like advertised flow numbers these are these are actual flow numbers um, on the same bench on both these heads with similar valves both narrowed stem except with the AFR heads having the actual skinnier 
uh, stem, so they do have that advantage. Uh, and let me know what you guys think. Is that why they're doing better up here? Uh, oftentimes, a better valve job you'll see down low, and then the port kind of takes off up here. Is this is this the difference between a better uh, casted port? Uh, and then what you guys think on the exhaust. So pretty interesting to see the difference. Uh, not a huge difference on the intake, even though uh, you know past 500 is where the AFR shine. Uh, if you ask a lot of guys down here is what matters. So it really depends on what you're going for. And, and, and remember guys, flow bench numbers, flow bench is just a tool for measuring airflow. Uh, it's not exact science uh, per se so uh, a lot of guys get really worked up about flow numbers uh, yeah I like flow numbers I like seeing the flow numbers but you know it's, at the end of the day it doesn't mean everything so uh, but as you can see there is some difference between these two I actually thought they were going to be closer and it was it's curious to see the difference uh, between the advertised flow numbers of the um, AFR heads versus what they actually flow. And I'm actually gonna chart those out and just show you guys real quick. AFR advertises versus what I got on the flow bench. Um, very similar for the most part, a uh, little difference variation in the exhaust down here and a little variation in the intake up here, but pretty normal. Only, you know, here's probably the biggest difference of eight CFM, but they actually flowed better than what they advertised. And I find this often will happen most of the time. They underestimate them a little bit, but it also depends head to head. There is always a little bit of a difference and there's always a little bit of a difference flow bench to flow bench. Like I said, this is a calibrated flow bench, so it's not some homemade one. So it, it is very, very accurate. But again, also flow numbers are just, it's just a tool. It's just a tool for measuring airflow. It's not the end of the world. Uh, if you're, if you're a little bit from bench to bench, uh, a little bit different. There's obviously some room for improvement if someone wanted to go import these. I have a lot of guys telling me that they've had those uh, Chinese heads ported and they're flowing upwards of 300 CFM. So that's pretty uh, pretty amazing and I would think um, you know anyone that's good with porting will be able to get these AFR heads uh, right up there too if your combination needs that sort of airflow. But right out of the box, uh, you know 261 uh, if you're if you're up there at 700 lift uh, but you're a 250 plus um, CFM cylinder head with excellent exhaust flow really really this is really good exhaust flow um, if you if you think about it like this most older small block Chevy's pre Vortec didn't even flow on the intake what these exhaust uh, these heads flow in the exhaust so that'll put it into proportion for you uh, 191 CFM on the exhaust is quite good uh, for an as cast head. So, all right, guys. Before someone asks me about the Vortec uh, porting video, it's coming next week. I was just waiting to get everything finalized. It's been a little crazy, obviously, with the weather and with everything that's going on. Um, but I was also kind of pushing off for the 4K subscriber giveaway. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys know. I am giving away something big for the Vortec fans, uh, especially for the guys that are running Vortex. And what I'm giving away is a full beehive uh, spring kit for your Vortec heads. I've sold uh, quite a few of these kits and guys are loving them. It's basically a drop-in um, beehive kit, like you can see on this uh, Chinese head here. Um, it's a drop-in kit for the Vortec heads. Uh, one of my lucky subscribers is gonna get a free kit shipped to them. Uh, these are a premium kit, uh, USA made springs, USA retainers, everything. Comes with seals, ready to drop into your Vortec heads. 530 to 580 lift, depending on your uh, application. I'll match the springs and the kit to your application. Uh, so I'm really excited to give someone uh, one of these kits. Uh, I, I know a lot of you guys will be interested in the kits. They are actually, I am kind of backordered right now because I'm having issues getting product from the manufacturers. Everyone seems to be backlogged. Uh, so I don't want to you know, change manufacturers because I like the quality of what I'm dealing with right now. So I might just have to wait this out. But I did save one kit for you guys because I wanted to give one away. So 
I'm going to explain it in the video when I hit 4K. I'm only maybe 20 subscribers away from that, so I'll be making a video real shortly on how that's going to work. It's going to be real simple, and uh, one of you guys are going to be lucky enough to win one of these kits. So if you enjoy the Vortex stuff, if you enjoy my videos, all you have to do is go down and hit the subscribe button and wait for the video for the 4K subscriber giveaway.